So hello, everyone. Uh, today we're um, here with Alfonso Salemi uh, from JAG Properties. Uh, Alfonso and, and his team are doing a uh, rent-to-own program. And uh, right now I'm going to pass it on to Alfonso and, and you can tell a little bit more about what you do. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks so much, Yuri. I, it's a pleasure to be here with you today. And uh, and like you said, yeah, we, we've uh, at JAG Properties, uh, we've kind of put together a, a, a rent-to-home program that helps people that can't qualify for conventional financing. So, let, you know, professionals like yourself um, that are working with clients, they can't get conventional financing. Uh, we can help them. We we help them uh, by purchasing the home, creating a program that's going to help them qualify for their own financing, and then sell the home back to them, and really kind of address you know the financial education, the financial needs that they need throughout the program, so that they are able and willing and ready uh, to purchase the home at the end of the program. Well, and again, the reason that we're talking uh, today, because uh, I came to the point in, in today's real estate where uh, people cannot uh, buy the properties uh, for, for many reasons. Even they're, they're in a position to buy uh, and they hate these bidding wars uh, kind of thing. This is just, uh, you know, it's just ridiculous how the, uh, people have to bid, uh, you know, 200000 300000 over the asking price, right? But in reality, and they've been priced out of the market. Uh, just yesterday, I was doing some research. And um, if you can't get in the market right now, uh, two years from now, the price based on a history, uh, two years history, uh, the price is going to be 50% uh, up from today's point. So how do you, you, you can't, you can't catch up with the market, right? So this is exactly the uh, why we're talking to you, because you want to get into the market right now versus two years or three years, because the, that's a runaway train, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, w waiting to buy real estate is, is uh, more often than not a good strategy. It, yeah. It's the, the earlier that you can get in, the earlier that you can buy, maybe there's some initial sacrifice, um, but the earlier that you can buy property, you know, especially, yeah, like you said, the last two years and even beyond that, um, you know, you look back five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, anybody that's purchased any, any real estate is probably, you know, in a very good situation and very happy that they did and that they didn't wait. And that's probably one of the, one of the biggest benefits uh, of the rent home program. Um, if you're not able to, to purchase because you're waiting to save up for your down payment to fix your credit score, um, you know, get that income history, you know, and tax returns built up, um, that, that's going to force you to wait to get into the market. Versus, you know, entering JAG's rental home program, um, you're able to address those issues like fixing your credit, save up for your down payment, uh, claim the right amount of income while you're in the rental home program, and you're actually locking in your future purchase price um, at the end of the term. Yeah, we discussed this a little bit uh, the other day, right? And and tell me, who's who's your ideal client? Who you it is, who is it geared towards? To? Yeah, so you know, we have several different kinds of clients or different avatars that we work with. L like I mentioned, um, you know really touches kind of everybody, the lack of credit information or knowledge about credit score. So somebody that is not able to qualify, they have good income, maybe they have saved up some money, but they don't have a, you know, a high enough credit for the banks and lenders. So that could be any age frame, you know, any type of demographic um, that they just, they need to improve their credit score. So that's kind of like a, a catch-all, anybody that uh, that is looking to improve their credit or needs to improve their credit mm -hmm. to qualify for financing. But some of the uh, major categories are definitely newcomers into the country that don't have established credit or are coming and they're starting a new job um, and uh, need to, to save up. Maybe they have a little bit of saved up, but they need to save up more, establish a little bit more credit. Um, so we were definitely helping newcomers into the country, young professionals as well, too, that are just finishing their school. Um, and again, don't have the income history, don't have the credit history. Maybe they have some down payment or, you know, the bank of mom and dad is only limited to a certain amount. So they need a little bit more to, to get into the market uh, and they need to save up that. And again, that takes time to save up and work. And if you're paying rent and, you know, you have other expenses that that's, you know, sometimes a long haul or, or it takes a, a little bit of longer time. So definitely a uh, young professional professionals. Um, I think a, a big part of our business is the self-employed and small business owners. That is a huge, huge part of, uh, of our clients. We, we love those, those, you know, entrepreneurs, we we're entrepreneurs, right? We own our own businesses and looking to serve and help people, whether that's trades, uh, whether that's, you know, tech companies, whether that's, you know, uh, again, there's so many small, small businesses, self-employed The obviously the, you know, the internet has created more and more uh, small businesses and, and, and services that people can kind of work from, from their home and really from their phone, right? So that they're creating some income and, and some money for themselves. But if they're not properly claiming that and getting that benefit, 
it's going to be really tough for them to qualify. So yep. that, that's a big part of our business. And, and it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's really anybody that, that can't qualify for conventional financing. We have all different types of, of people, ages, um, you know, demographics that, that can't qualify for the conventional financing. That, that's a big part of, of who we work with. Somebody that wants to own their home, create a stability for their family. Um, yeah, th that, that's who's important to us, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, like I mentioned. And again, the younger demographic that, you know, I, I feel for it because they keep saying it's going to be impossible to buy. You'll never be able to buy. You'll never buy. Don't buy. You're going to always be stuck renting. And as we know, like, you know, renting, you're paying somebody else's mortgage, covering their expenses, making them money. Ownership is, you know, of your own home is probably one of the most important, if not the most important. So, um, yeah, all different types of demographics, especially, you know, younger millennials in that, you know, mid 20s to, to early 30s and beyond as well, too, um, that, that, that want to own their home. So that's just kind of a little bit of an overview. But really, anybody that can't qualify for conventional financing that wants to own their home that is willing to put in the work to improve credit, save up uh, for their down payment and, uh, and make sure that they, they have, you know, the income that that's who we can help. Right. Right. And if we want to, if you want to uh, maybe, uh, or we can dive a little bit deeper. Uh, what does it, because people don't know, you don't know what you don't know. Right. That's right. Uh, when it, when you, when you talk about uh credit score, for example, it, you know, if it's, if you're self-employed, you need two years of uh, consecutive income that you know, to qualify, and and the bank will take the average of the two years. So you need to work uh, towards that. I I think I believe I have a video that's coming out next week uh, to to actually explain why you're better off to pay taxes versus uh, and we discussed that before, right? Why you're better off to take pay taxes versus trying to save uh, on not paying taxes, right? <laughs> that, that's right. Yeah. Which there, is, there's there's advantages and disadvantages for both, for sure. Yeah. But if, if home ownership is important to you, then yeah, th it is the benefit. Like it's the trade-off, right? Yeah, you'll pay yeah. lower tax, but maybe a higher interest rate or, or not qualify at all, right? Yeah. If that if that's the case. Well, yeah, again, I like I, I did the presentation. It was uh, uh, basically, uh, if you kind of qualify uh, on, on an A side, you may not qualify on a B side. or So, so your, your option is uh, a private mortgage, which you're looking at 10%. And um, then it's it, you kind of almost in a predicament where catch twenty two you have to prepare for, to get a good credit or or qualify for the mortgage while you're paying ten percent. So you need to pay the government uh, the the taxes and 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 you need to pay ten percent because you already got into the um, into the private mortgage, which is a no no kind of thing because you 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 have a double whammy there, right? Absolutely, so, and, and that and that full payment is kind of really going out the window. Mm -hmm. Right in, in, in the rent to home program, the payments that you make a portion of every every monthly payment is actually credited back to you, right? So that you have that initial deposit at the beginning of, of the program, and then each month you're building towards that savings. So you're making that payment, you know, versus a private lender or private mortgage, you're making that payment and it's gone. One hundred percent of it is gone. Yeah. Um, in the rent to own program, you're making that payment. A portion of that's actually being credited back. Or given back to you at the end of the program, so that you can use for for that down payment and qualify. Uh, Alfonso, uh, on that note, can you break down, you know, what's what's the total payment consist of? Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, that's that's probably one of the most common questions that we get. You know, how much does it cost? Is it extra? You know, you know, maybe mis misconceptions that you know it does cost more. I, I'd like to kind of you know debunk that myth and say it's actually you're actually going to be paying less if you think about it because again that credit portion is going to be returned back to you so just like any other homeowner you're going to be paying the mortgage which consists of obviously the principal and the interest there's taxes and insurance that you need to pay on the property as well too as if you are a homeowner and then the the variable payment is what that monthly credit is so just as an example let's just use simple numbers if we needed to get to seventy two thousand dollars at the end of the program, that's what we needed saved up. And you started the program with 36,000. Well, over a three year program, you'd be paying an additional thousand dollars per month, right? So that you get up to that total of $72,000. So that you now have the 36 at the beginning, the 36 throughout the program and $72,000 is gonna be credited to use for a deposit down payment to qualify for the financing. Now you can move those numbers around if, you know, uh, Yuri, if you started with, you know, uh, 50,000, well, then you'd only need to save up another 22,000. So divide that. 
yeah. over the period of the term. If I started with 20,000, well, then I would need to save up that 52 over the program. So that's what the variable is. And it is different for every single one of our clients. It is dependent on the purchase price of the home, what you're qualified for. Obviously, the tax and the insurance uh, of the property as well. But that's what the payment does consist of, of the mortgage, the tax, the insurance, as well as that monthly credit that's going to be applied for the down payment at the end of the program. Uh, now, is there a maintenance or property management fee or any of that nature? Nothing that is paid to us in terms of a management fee or anything like that. Obviously, um, we're, we're trying to create homeowners or it's a home ownership and training program. Right. So any maintenance, upkeep, improvements to the actual home, to the property, that is the responsibility of the client, of the tenant buyer that's in the program. If the sink breaks, toilet leaks, uh, you want to do some landscaping, uh, I, I don't know, something falls out of the sky and you know goes through the roof, things like that. The, the normal general maintenance and upkeep of the property, that's the client's responsibility. So um, that's as if they were owning the home already. Um, again, there is insurance on the property. So if there is anything that does happen, that would be covered. There would be a claim that needed you know, to go through. Um, but no additional fees or just because you're in the rent-to-home program, none of that is being you know charged or, or, or as a fee from us. Um, it's just those those four, like I said, the mortgage tax, the insurance, the, the monthly credit, and then yeah. the ongoing maintenance and upkeep of the property. And the bonus is really that, you know, in the program, you have the support. I like to call it like the credit 411 that, you know, that you can reach out to somebody, talk to them and say, okay, I got an offer at this retail store for a credit card, or I want to get a line of credit because I'm looking to do this or that. Uh, I, I need to purchase a new vehicle and I want to finance it. Right. So basically looking at it from a holistic point of view of how your overall financial wellness is being improved. And that's included as part of all of our programs, because ultimately we want the client to own their home and we want to sell that property back to them. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I mean, it's a, you, you, you want to circle the money, you know, <laughs> for sure. I just wanted to touch base on the credit score and, and some of those qualifying criteria as well. And for self-employed as well, we touched on that before, right? So for the credit score, I mean, I, the, the bank, some of the banks will take, uh, uh, you know, just over 600 uh, credit score. Uh, however, it's not always the case where you're going to get the best rate, right? So, you know, we're trying to, to get, or I guess your company as well, trying to get to where you, they can get a good mortgage, good rates and all that. Um, so you're looking at probably 680 to and, and up. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's no two credit scores that are the same. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we've worked with clients with some pretty precarious credit situations, um, you know, previous bankruptcies or consumer proposals or their credit was pretty bruised. And yeah, that does take time, two, three, four years for that to be, you know, diligently worked on and improved. So we don't necessarily have a minimum credit score that we, you know, uh, you know, use as part of our application. But to your point, uh, um, by the end of the program, yeah, with that 680, if your credit score starts with a seven, you know, that's usually a good sign that the bank's lenders are, are going to kind of give you those, those preferred rates or, or those better rates mm -hmm. so that, you know, your payments can be lower. And, you know, that's ultimately what we want to do is put the client in that best situation. Right. And right. Um, yeah, but that's usually that breaking point that 680, 700, I'd like to say just nice round number. Right. You know, right. if it's over 700, it, it, it gives you that little bit of extra to, to negotiate or, or to work with the banks so that you can qualify for some, some good rates. And, and talking about down payment, again, we discussed this before where, uh, for the self-employed uh, or some people that go through a divorce and, and they through, through breakup, they may have the down payment, uh, you know, $100,000 to $100,000, but uh, in the like, divorce breakup, for example, they're not going to have sufficient income or uh, like uh, self-employed, same idea. Uh, they're not going to have sufficient income. We have to educate uh, what to do. And it, that will take at least two years because, uh Dep depending on a cycle where they enter, let's, if they, we enter entering right now, we can tell them to claim uh, to claim their sufficient income for this year and then next year. And then, yeah, we can we can uh, kind of complete the program within two years, literally. Right. Yeah. Or, I, I, but if you uh, go into the cycle and then somebody uh, approaches you in, in August and their year end is uh, as a business in June or something like that, then they have to go another cycle right so. absolutely and, and that's why planning is so important right and and you know everybody knows that it does take time uh, it, it can't just be corrected the credit score can't just be improved the you know tax returns you need the time to pass you need for the next year to finish so that you can claim your file your taxes uh with with the correct amount you know there's been some cases as well where some clients have had to go and you know re um resubmit right or or change 
something. So we, we help them through that process as well, where, you know, they're actually claiming what they're truly making. Um, so yeah, it, it is really all about planning. It's not just looking at that from a single standpoint of like, well, I make this much, it should be fine. You know, it's talking about the credit. It's, it's talking about the income. It's talking about saving the down payment and yeah. putting all those pieces together and really putting a plan together. Cause you can't just wake up in the morning and say, okay, well, I'm going to go and do this tomorrow. You need that time to, to elapse and you need to, the, to put the work into the plan uh, so that you can qualify and, and you can get in that best, the best position. Yeah. yeah I've seen all kinds of applications or, even uh, just people verbally saying, oh, I'm making $150,000 or 200000 So, uh, and uh, I, I work as, a, as an employee. And uh, so in your mind, you're thinking, yeah, I'm good and covered. Uh, but as a good example, my wife uh, works at Mac University and Mac University and, and other employers are famous for having their uh, employees even full-time, but they're on a contract. So if it's a contract, the, the bank, bank will not uh, touch it, literally. So, That's right. It, yeah, it's for them. It's a, li a liability. They want to see that full time. They want to be able to see that the that person is able to make those payments. And if it is that contract, then, you know, that could be ended at any point. And that's mm -hmm. in the bank size. Yeah, potential liability. Right. And and I mean, we can't blame uh, banks. That's their policy. We just have to play by their rules, uh, whether it's fortunate or unfortunate. But I mean, there's no other way. Right. So we have to uh, comply to, with those rules and uh, uh, see where that uh, and. Yeah, that process can take uh, for, from contract employee to full time employee may take two years, three years, four years. Who knows, right? Great story. Um, we've had several clients that have you know gone through school, finished their designation. You know whether it's in healthcare or uh, you know a, a new career that they've just started. I'm just thinking of one specifically that you know got hired in that exact situation that they were part time, but they were working like full time plus hours, right? So again it was two years of working that, you know, full-time hours, but on, you know, the contract or the employment agreement said part-time and, you know, throughout the rental program, she was able to actually convert and change that to full-time. And that's what helped her. Like the income was there. It was strong. She was actually making it probably more than you know, the normal full-time employee, but because she needed to put that, you know, seniority or get that time in to the job to get that full-time, that's why she was able to be successful into the, into the rent to home program because she needed that two, three years so that she could get full time and then actually qualify at the end of the program because she tried at the beginning and because she was part time, nobody from the bank is going to listen and say, Oh, you actually work, you know, 50 hours plus a week, right. but your, con your contract says part time and they look at that and that's where it ends. Right. Well, part time is different than contract, right? Because part time, at least you're guaranteed the, that you, they're sure. not going to let you go with well, the contract is the, the contract can end tomorrow and that's the end of it. Right. Um, like I, I, I'm working right now on a mortgage where uh, the person makes $120,000 on their full time and $80,000 on their part time, which is believe it or not, which is kind of crazy. Wow. Uh, and we cannot take that part time portion because uh, they're only been in that uh, in that position, uh, that uh, job uh, only for one year. It went once once they're there for two years, then we can consider that. But before, well, there you go, a prime yeah. candidate, right? For yeah. for right well, because again, they, they qualify as it is, but it's just you know see. they could qualify for a lot more if uh, you know we, we have to present a case where yes they're you know they're tied on on their ratios, but uh, they have sufficient income to to cover more more than more than enough at this point, right? So and and they have some well, substantial savings and that kind of stuff, so. Well, again, right, and, and it is just that matter of time that needs to elapse of, again, getting that history back up. But again, if, let's just say for this example, I know you said that they qualify. If they didn't, they'd have to wait a year or another two. And what does the market do at that point there? Yes, they can qualify. But what does 600000 700000 look like in a year or two from now? Right. It's already kind of the, the bottom of the market yeah. in most. Oh, most I can tell right? you. I can tell you what it's going to look like. I mean, even for this year, for two months. Uh, I've seen 10, 10, 13 percent increase over the yeah. over the last year. So, it's uh, it, it doesn't stop. And if I if I can allude to that, uh, like we just talked about the um, um, refugee program, right? Uh, um, the government is we're working right now. I'm Ukrainian, so the government working right now to accept around 150,000 or something. Not nothing in stone yet, but 150,000 refugees. Uh, they have got to live somewhere, right? Yeah. And then, and then uh, there is a 660,000 uh, on a backlog, immigration backlog, basically from last two years. Um, and uh, 
we have another uh, 341,000 scheduled to come in this year, right? So oh, it's yeah. over, over a million people that have to come here. They got to live somewhere. And, you know, perhaps, um, you know, that's not a bad uh, program to, to enter uh, one or two or three. You, you wait for three years, but at least uh, some of it goes to you versus uh, it goes, goes out, you know. <laughs> Uh, absolutely. We, we see it all the time. Newcomers coming into the country, you know, whether, you know, whatever reason they're, they're relocating, you know, for, for good or bad reasons, but they, they, they need that. They want to establish that they're coming here yeah. to establish that if they're coming in just to, to pay rent and throwing money out the window, yeah. that's, you know, that's not a good foundation, right? If they are looking to stay here long-term and they want to be here long-term, then that might be a good way to enter that market because it's only going to get tougher in the years ahead. And if they're not preparing and planning for that right off the bat to get when, once they arrive here, you know, it's just going to get tougher. Alfonso, one more question. It's kind of uh, very interesting. It may appeal to uh, lots of people. Uh, let's say uh, if somebody buys this, this property through this program, uh, can they do the renovations and uh, perhaps go through, you know, secondary suite or, you know, like in-law suite, whatever you want to call it, and get an additional uh, rent uh, once they, you know, get the possession of it? Yes, yeah, absolutely. And we've had many, many clients that are that are go out and search for a property so that that does facilitate that, that they can put in a legal second suite. And we've even had clients in our program that are renting out a room or a basement, you know, to supplement, right, for the, the payment that they're making every month. But absolutely, we've probably had, I, I would say, maybe, maybe a handful, maybe four or five clients that have bought that property. Um, they know that they're going to own that home, you yeah. know, in, in two to three or four years. And, you know, they've started budgeting on, you know, creating a legal second suite, whether they're going to stay there and rent out, you know, the upper or lower mm -hmm. unit, or that their plan was that once they own the home, they fill both vacancies or both units, and then they move on to their next property. Yep. Um, yep. Absolutely. And, and we encourage that because that, that's a great way to help supplement it. Like there's only so like, if you are working as an employee or, or even in a business, there's only so much more income that you can bring on or you can make. Why not have somebody supplement your 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 biggest expense your living expense um by doing that so I, absolutely um yeah i think there's been at least like i said at least three that the clients once they've purchased the home uh, or they had the idea once they purchased the home that they're actually going to convert that into a legal second suite um and, and yeah help supplement their payments each yeah, that, that's exactly why i asked that question because you know not everybody will well, not everybody will make hundred fifty thousand dollars or two hundred thousand dollars income even as a family right so uh, having that uh, tenant in the, uh, as long as you're open to having a tenant in, in, in your suite or unit, uh, or, you know, depends on split, whether it's a basement or a side. And, and uh, right now, uh, Hamilton and other municipalities are actually open uh, to secondary suites, three, three units uh, kind of thing, right? So it's, it's a great idea to, or a great tool to have that and have supplemental income. And you're right. If uh, if that's something that they're going to turn out not their cup of tea, they can rent it and, and buy another property for themselves to live. Right? As a, yeah. Now, uh, just just alluded to other municipalities. What area do you cover? Yeah. So you know, we've always worked right across the province. We've gone from Sunbury, Windsor, all the way across to you know Ottawa. Uh, you know, uh, up north to, to Barrie, around the Golden Horseshoe, Hamilton, Niagara area. We do have a focus in southwestern Ontario. Our home base is out of London, Ontario. I'm I'm based out of Hamilton, so that you know 401 corridor um, is, is is an area that we focus on. Uh, but really, we go where our clients want to live. You know, where their jobs are, where their children's schools are. You know, there's a reason why they want to live in the city that they want to live in. Um, again, because of those reasons, work, uh, children's school, family. Right. So we really go because the client gets to choose their home. They get to pick the house that they want to live in, that they want to own. Um, so, yeah, we, we kind of work in all areas. Uh, we've gone really north in some cases. We've, we've worked, you know, really close to home in others. Um, but that southwestern Ontario is kind of our, our main focus. Um, and, and we're looking to do and grow and more expand in, in those areas. But uh, but really, if we, if we have a potential client that, you know, has strong fundamentals and they're in Ottawa or if they're in, you know, Sudbury, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go to those areas and, and, uh, and help facilitate that. Because again, you know, th that's where they want to live. There's a reason why they want to be there. 
um, and own their home. I, I think it's the last question, but uh, what do you think, uh, what, what, what's the procedure? What's the process? How do you take, you know, what's, can you go like step by step? What the client, what your client needs to qualify for that program? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Once they, once the clients have, you know, indicated that they've met the, the minimum criteria and our minimum criteria is a hundred thousand dollars of household income, the minimum, you know, that's a uh, spouses, uh, family members, uh, siblings, whatever the case, that hundred thousand dollars of total family income, and then three percent of the approved purchase price for their down payment. Once they've met that criteria, the 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 system kind of goes as we're collecting the documents, their income verification, tax returns, job letters. You know, if there have been other you know uh, bankruptcies, consumer proposals, those types of things. Collecting all those documents, and then we put together a budget. We say this is what you're approved for. It's six hundred, or five fifty, or seven twenty five. This is the budget. They go out and search and look for the home. That could take any amount of time, but they go out and look for that home. They identify the one that you know they want to live in for the rental home program and beyond. We purchase the home for them, and you know we outline what their payments are each month, uh, how much of that is going to actually be applied towards their future down payment, what the future purchase price will be. Once all of those agreements are um, are confirmed and finalized, then we purchase the home, go final or, or go firm with the sellers. The clients get to move in. They get to move in today. They don't need to wait to fix their credit. They don't need to save up the down payment. Uh, they get to move in today. Our team works with them, you know, over the two, three or four year period to, again, increase credit, save up the down payment, make sure they're claiming the right amount of income. And they have a predetermined sale price or a purchase price that they know that they're going to buy the home for, let's just say at three years at the end of the term. So we do another agreement of purchase and sale um, at that point. They, you know, work with, you know, professional like you that gets them qualified for the financing and then they purchase the home and they're the proud homeowners. So once we've verified all the information, we give them the budget, they choose the home, we buy it, they make their payments, work with our team, and then they qualify for their own financing. That's kind of as simple as we can put it. If we were in an elevator, we know we were going up seven floors, eight floors, that, that's that's the easiest way that I could put it. And yeah. it's really for people that, that want to own their home, that that want to establish some roots and, and you know, and, and create a safe, secure place for their family and control. Because I can't tell you how many um, potential tenant buyers or clients that we're seeing that are calling us saying, my landlord is selling, I need to move. They they don't they don't want to own this place anymore. They're taking advantage of the market and how high it is, and they need to move and they need to leave their place. If you're owning your home, if you're in that rental home, that's control that they have for that that term of the rental home. And then once they own the actual pro the, the property at the end of the program, uh, Alphonse, I have one more question. Uh, if the people have uh, you know their own uh, realtor or mortgage brokers, they can can they work with those people, or you you have they have to choose your own your your, your team. Oh, great question. And, and absolutely, they, they can continue to work with, you know, the realtor, the broker that, you know, that they, they're comfortable with, that they, that they have a relationship with. We're not mortgage brokers, we're not realtors. Um, so with, when a client is referred and, and they're working with a great realtor or a mortgage broker, yeah, we, we don't want to sever that relationship. We want to continue to foster that relationship. And when they're looking for homes, yeah, we want them to work with a realtor that they trust. And as well too, like, you know, if a client's being referred from, from a mortgage broker, we're, we're checking in and making sure that the, those relationships are still strong and right. uh, yeah, that they can go back to, you know, the, that broker that they, they know and work with uh, so that they can get the qualification. So absolutely that they have that choice. Uh, of who they work with. We're going to always be there to help and support if they don't, you know, want or don't have that professional. But again, if they're they're coming to the table with someone that they know and trust, either a realtor or mortgage broker, absolutely, yeah. they can continue to uh, to work with them. In, in other words, you don't chew off the, the arm that feeds you, right? <laughs> absolutely. We work with so many different professionals from all different brokerages. We, uh, we yeah, we, we want to make as many relationships as possible. Um, yeah, it, it wouldn't make sense for us to say, hey, yeah, thanks for sending over your client. And, and then we kind of take it over. We right. want them to, <laughs> we want them to feel comfortable. Um, and, and we want, you know, we want everybody to do what their job is, you know, and do that the best because we can't be the best rent a home company as well as you know the best realtor is the best mortgage broker we need to work with professionals that are the best in their industry so that everybody can play their part and, and help the client yep yep well thanks so much it's a system it's not just task or to-do list or something here and there and it's yeah. all jumping all over the place it's it's a system and i and i know i've i've, uh, I've seen it before you want to make sure that uh, the people qualify at the end of the term because i've, I've seen other companies that don't follow through 
you know uh i know you guys follow through and i've seen it before uh and i mean you have the results to show for it right i mean obviously you can't control uh people you know when i do the, i'm doing the mortgage i got a pre-approval i got approval actually and we're closing in two weeks and all of a sudden uh, uh oh uh, I, well they, they come to me to sign the papers and they kind of uh, come in a new lexus like what, <laughs> what's going on here like oh we just yeah. bought it like great you don't qualify for the mortgage so we can provide you as much uh, education as possible, but you have, with the, the, you know, as a, as a buyer, you have a responsibility, a responsibility uh, to follow the guidelines and and you know make sure that you will qualify because we we can do our part, we can educate, but uh, we can't um, you know slap your wrist and say no no don't don't buy this or don't buy that. As far, like when it comes to debt, yeah, I mean there's no problem if you buy a um, printer or something like that, but but when you're buying. Thirty, forty thousand dollars car, or seventy thousand dollars car, and you have a thousand dollars payment, that's gonna put a stop to the whole deal. Absolutely, and that's where it comes down to. And I'm glad you touched upon that, is because ultimately we always have the end in mind. We we need to, we we will will never start a rental home program with a client that there isn't a clear path that they can't qualify and and first of all make the payments each month, but also qualify for the financing based on their income, their down payment, mm -hmm. and their credit. Um, again, like you said, people are going to be people and, and they're going to make decisions, you know, sometimes on emotion, but again, we're there checking in with them saying, okay, do you want to buy that Lexus, but let's work on this first and let's build a plan so that, you know, through the rental home program, after the rental home program, you have some equity, then maybe you can get towards that yeah. goal yeah. for today. Let's look at something else. That's maybe a little bit more affordable or makes more sense for the financial picture. And, and yeah. that's what it is. It's really using the real estate, the home as the vehicle to, to, to kind of educate the clients about that financial awareness, that financial education, so that they they feel comfortable saying, hey, you know what, maybe I need to wait on this because this is more important in prioritizing, you know, th those purchases uh, in, in their lives. But yeah, our, our underwriting in, in the clients that enter our program, we, we, we really scrutinize them, we really look at them and we really see, is this gonna be a viable candidate? And if we think no, then yeah, we're, we're, gonna, we're not gonna move forward because that's not good for them. And we don't want to put people in worse positions. We're actually trying to put them in better positions. And if we're not successful, um, if the, sorry, if the client's not successful, we're not successful. Our partners aren't successful. Our professionals that we work with, they're not going to be happy with us if, if we're, if we're doing that. So we, we want to make sure that we're, we're putting people in the right position in the, in, in the best position for them to succeed and, and, and own their home. I, I think it's a great program. A couple of years ago, it might, you know, might have had different alternatives, but right now I think it's the, one of the ways that you can, you can't afford to buy a house, you know, because if you don't qualify now, uh, and you may not qualify, uh, in two years or never literally like it's, yeah. I don't know what's going on. And like I said, the, the, the demand is there. They were not going to, uh, fulfill the demand in the next two, two, three, five years, or even 10 years. I mean, uh, this, the, the amount of, uh, housing we're building is not, not nowhere near to fulfill this. With, with the immigration that we have coming in, it's yeah. just, uh, I don't think we can fulfill that, but. Well, yeah. And that's, yeah, that's just one point, the, the immigration coming in and then, yeah, people that do want to move out of their, their family home, right. Their, mm -hmm. their parents' houses or, or looking, you know, as, as maybe families divide and go into other properties as well. Right. right? So, um, like you said, yeah, this is not going to be a, you know, a quick term fix, um, you know, in terms of the supply, um, but, you know, to get in there earlier, to start, you know, towards that as, as early as you can, it is the, is the, is the best route in my opinion. And, and I think we have, we agree on that. And with my realtor had on, I, uh, had on, I know the prices probably, well, not going to go down because, uh, people are still coming from Toronto, uh, cause still cheaper when we're talking Hamilton, London, Windsor, uh, we still have uh, cheaper prices than, than Toronto. So people will be migrating from Toronto and especially with the, uh, distant working from, you know, from home, uh, my, my, my brother-in-law works, uh, uh, for the company in BC. Uh, and he's in Ontario. Yeah. And it's, he's in Ontario. So, uh, he, he loves it, you know, <laughs> well, well, it's great. Yeah. And, and it's just gonna, there's gonna be more opportunities for, yeah, those, those secondary and tertiary markets that, you know, people are going to expand and yeah, there's no need to be right in the center of the core unless you, you know, you know, proximity to work is going to be, you know, less important unless you actually physically need to be, you know, at, at your workplace. If you're able to work from home, then the distance maybe is not as important and you can work in, in, in from home in, in other areas that are a little bit further. And yeah, the case in point with your, yeah. your brother-in-law that's working in BC and living in Ontario, 
um, yeah, that, that's where I think we're going to see more and more of that. Yeah, well, I think uh, we, we can conclude on this. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure we have haven't touched so many things. It's <laughs> not it's not a half an hour conversation. I mean, we we talked to Alfonso what uh, probably an hour an hour at a time, you know, whenever we <laughs> on different oh, yeah. topics and subjects. Uh, but uh, you know, thanks so much for listening. And and if you have any questions, uh, you can uh, call me directly or call Alfon Alfonso, and uh, we can uh, definitely start the process if you're interested in uh, going through this program. So yeah, thank wonderful. thank you so much, Alfonso, coming in for coming in. Uh, yeah, wonderful. Great speaking with you. And yeah, looking forward to uh, to helping more people. And yeah, and chatting more with you, Yuri. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.